I'm here with you today to tell you why a, a people's vote is now imminent, Julia, after the events of the last 48 hours. Excellent. Mm. And, and how imminent is it? Well, we're still waiting for Theresa May to produce her deal, and uh, she's currently in the United Nations, so I assume she's not negotiating in Brussels since, since, since she's on another continent. But when she comes back to this continent and, and recommences her negotiations, maybe in uh, six weeks, two months, maybe three months, she'll have something for us to look at. And, and, uh, and we know already, don't we, from what uh, Sir Keir Starmer, the Shadow Brexit Secretary, had to say, um, who, who's obviously well known to be a, a Remainer himself like you, that, um, that whatever the deal is, it's going to fail the six tests that have been set uh, from the Labour Party in terms of whether or not this is a Brexit Labour could vote for. He's already basically said, whatever the deal is, we're going to vote against it. Now, we know we've got probably 60 Eurosceptic Tory MPs who'd vote against it as well, uh, the, those led by uh, the likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg, at which point, realistically, she either doesn't bring that deal to the table, doesn't bring it to the Commons, to, doesn't want to face a defeat, or we have a no-deal scenario. Um, in which case, which of those would you prefer? Well, I don't want a, a no-deal scenario, because a no-deal scenario, there's always a danger in these situations that, uh, uh, that, that these things could actually happen, and, and a no-deal would be catastrophic for, for the country. I think it would also actually be illegal, because it would require there to be a border in Ireland, which would be uh, against the Good Friday Agreement and international treaties. So I, I don't think that we will have a no deal. I think what we could have is some kind of emergency deal that simply rolls over all existing provisions while further negotiations take place. But this, of course, and is what you'd be uh, very happy with, because we all know that the reality is, in terms of the actual parliamentary procedures to get what you call a people's vote, I would call a loser's vote, certainly a second referendum. The reality is you can't get that through Parliament before the end of March 2019, 29th of March, 11pm. I've got it marked in the diary is when we leave, um, you'd actually have to extend that Article 50 process past two years. Uh, we'd then be extending that. Realistically, how well do you think that would go down with Labour Party voters, a huge number of whom voted to leave? Well, of course, it would be the fault of the government. The crucial thing at the moment is that the initiative, I mean, despite, you know, we're talking about the Labour Party because we're at the Labour Party conference, but the initiative in all of this lies with the government. The people conducting the negotiations are the government. They're not us. The people who started talking about no deal were the government. It was the government that published a whole lot of papers saying well, they should be preparing for no supplies. deal if it's an option they should be they should yeah. have been preparing for it back in 2016 uh, well, surely. well whether they should or not it's it's up to them and so the whole timetable will be driven by them so what we'll say to our voters is uh, it's not it's not our fault that this is happening we're having to respond in real time no. to a crisis which the I government's creating absolutely accept that it's been absolutely hopeless and incompetence on behalf of this government no question at all we agree, we, we agree. We find, well, there are I very think, few things but we have managed and, and to I find agreement that, on that point we also agree that Theresa may is the worst prime minister in living memory don't we i certainly mm, agree on that with Mr. Farage, I can't remember whether you and I have agreed I, on no, that. No, I, I don't. Do you, have it, any, it depends. do you have any candidates who are worse in, I, in I, recent I, times? Do you know what? I, um, am, uh, I am struggling with that one. Mm. I, I have to well, no, Gordon, know. Gordon Brown was pretty poor, wasn't he? Yes, but I don't think you put him in the I, same Well, I wasn't Theresa, a fan of John you? Major or, 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 or to Margaret Thatcher I, at the time. So, I, I, you know. I, think, I think we may be reaching a point of consensus. And, and that is the I hold candles for very few of our yeah. Prime Ministers. Can we get on to the point, though? Yes, absolutely. The failure of the negotiations to date certainly the fault of both this government, uh, the Conservative government and, and, uh, and the EU as well. However, uh, the reality is you're no, the, the, this, your party is in favour of a second referendum, but you're not in a position, I mean, you're not, you're an unelected member of the House of Lords, you're not in a position to actually bring about either the general election, everyone keeps saying they're desperate to have, or a second referendum. So it's all very well having a policy on this, but since you can't actually bring it about... Um, is not actually going to happen, is but it? But we are the indispensable requirement for it to happen. What happens in uh, in this crisis that we're facing will, will depend upon what 20 or 30 Conservative MPs do, because they're the ones who will hold the balance in the House of Commons. But, of course, unless the entire Labour Party votes either for an election or for a people's vote, then there won't be the basis of a majority for those. At the end of the day, the person who will probably decide what happens to the future of this country, Julia, apart from yourself, because, of course, you're hugely influential in these debates, oh, absolutely. it will probably be Dominic Green because he's the linchpin figure around whom about 20 to 30 moderate Conservatives who are desperately worried about us crashing out of the EU, uh, hammering our jobs and trade, companies relocating from the country and all of that. And, and what he chooses to do, whether at the end of the day, as I confidently hope and expect he votes for a people's vote, that is what will determine what happens. Okay, now, um, so if, you should be having him on, on your programme uh, every day. If, if, Parliament, me, if so. Parliament rejects a, a deal, um, uh, Jeremy Corbyn has said that we'll be returning to the EU negotiating table. He apparently is making our arrangements to, uh, to go to Brussels to meet with Michel Barnier to discuss things with at himself. Is that appropriate? 
Michel Barnier meets everybody, as far as I can see. Is he, has he met you yet, no, Julia? I, I think you should invite him on your programme. I would be uh, more I, than I, happy I have to have Michel to, Barnier on my programme. I have yet to meet anyone who has not met, engaged, <laughs> Am I the who first has not person? Michel Barnier. Indeed, OK, there's our tweeting uh, question. Have you met Michel Barnier, I, I think, the I think, YouTube I, I, I think this is a serious failure on your part, Julia, that you haven't yet managed to meet him. Why have you not turned up in Brussels I, with I, your crew? Maybe, maybe and, I just couldn't get through security him. to get I mean, to the meeting time. You need these old journalistic techniques, Julia. They're called doorstepping. What you do is you turn up with your camera and you're, you're, you wait at the door of the Berlaymont building and you catch him on the way out. And okay. then you ask him what he discussed with Mr Corbyn and he'll probably tell you. Let's, let's, let's talk about uh, what's going to happen on the uh, conference floor today. Uh, we're going to be having a speech from Jeremy Corbyn trying to get back to the core message, this uh, attack on greed is good capitalism. Um, that's going to go down brilliantly in the party hall. Everyone loves that. Uh, and people, we've had a, a, someone on the conference hall yesterday calling for you know, getting rid of this horrible, spiteful, nasty, dory government. And, uh, and calling for a general strike. How well do you think it's going to go down outside uh, the, the, the chamber, uh, the conference hall, with people when, as just been tweeted by, we're we reading it out from the uh, Downing Street Direct Communications, that actually there are some simple facts that we have got now the highest employment levels in decades. We've got half uh, the unemployment rate of countries like France and much of the uh, European Union. Do you think that message is going to ring true? This, oh, this, 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 everyone's having a terrible time, terrible austerity, you know, capitalism bad, socialism good, when actually for the majority of people, People, they, they are somehow making ends meet. Well, the, the extraordinary thing about the positions that Jeremy Corbyn is taking is they're remarkably similar to the positions that Theresa May took when she became Prime Minister. Do you remember the speech on the steps of Downing Street, how capitalism isn't working? Uh, no praise at all for her Conservative predecessors, needed a, f a fundamental change in, in power and values in the country. I think what Jeremy is saying is remarkably similar to the first version of Theresa May. Uh, the, uh, uh, then there came the election, and she did very badly in the election, and she had to go back to her core Conservative base and so we haven't heard so much about the dispossessed and the poor since then but I think that the voters out there who because of the backdrop to all this which is part of the reason why Brexit is happening has been a terrible 10 years I mean a 10 years of austerity of declines in real wages particularly in in the Midlands and the north of the country which hasn't had the um, the impact of the London powerhouse and these messages which have been coming both from Tory and Labour politicians in recent years uh, they resonate loudly the big issue is action because what they've seen is a, a load of words and no action. Now, you're, the action you want to see, Julian, you've been quite open about this, is to Brexit as soon as possible so we can actually show them that we've done no, something. I, no, I, I just simply but, want the I just want the referendum decision yeah. to be enacted. I'm old-fashioned like that, I, that we should I, respect democracy. Yeah, but I go up and down the country and, and, and talk uh, and talk in these communities all the time and, and what they definitely do want is they want things to change. They don't want all the cuts in local services. They want better jobs. They want jobs which offer more security. You know, and a lot of this gig, these are gig economy jobs where you get no sick pay you don't get any holidays, things of this kind. There's real discontent about that. And I think at the moment there's a massive political space open for, for the person who okay. can deliver on that. And just finally, uh, you're going to be joining us, but I just want to check, at the end of today, will we be a bit clear about what Labour's Brexit policy is going to be? Because you say, we always argued that the, the, the policy that would most hurt the people you're talking about would be a no-deal Brexit or indeed Brexit of any kind. When Sir Keir Starmer went off script yesterday, um, we've had the likes of uh, Diane Abbott, the Shadow Home Secretary saying she agrees with uh, Jeremy Corbyn and he agrees with Keir Starmer, so therefore she agrees with him. But the reality is, at the top of the party, there isn't full agreement. You certainly agree with Sir Keir Starmer, but what he had to say yesterday that got the standing ovation from the floor of the, uh, the uh, conference hall isn't actually official Labour Party mm. policy, well, is it? Can I let you into a secret, just you and me on this yeah, programme? No, sorry, no one's listening uh, to you. I, I don't agree with Keir. Because the policy that he set out yesterday is that in the event of Theresa May's deal collapsing in Parliament, one option on the table will be a people's vote. Now, to my mind, that is a weak and pathetic position. The right position for the Labour Party, because it's the right position for the country, is that in the event of Parliament not wanting her deal, because it trashes the economy and trashes people's jobs, the right thing then is to go immediately to a people's vote. To have this big faffing around, which could last for months. I mean, we could be in this kind of zombie period. It would take six period. months to actually bring about a people's vote, well, you I call it. Well, I think, we should move, I, think, I think we should move to a people's vote immediately after any, any deal is rejected. Right. So uh, at the moment, there's no agreement amongst any of us.